Today I have a very important public service announcement for all passionate tennis players. My name is Pete, I'm your totally obsessed coach here and today I'm going to explain what your number one job is as a tennis player because unfortunately most tennis players get this wrong. It even took me a while to learn and understand. So don't confuse your number one desire, which is completely normal and natural as a tennis player with what your job is. So your number one desire is to go out there and play amazing lights out tennis like the pros. You want to step onto the court, you want to hit a bunch of winners, you want to pretend like you're your favorite pro, you want to go out there each and every day and you want to play in the absolute zone. I don't blame you. That's what all tennis players want to do, but that is not your number one job as a tennis player. See, wanting to play great tennis, that's a desire. Just like you know, most people in their job or their business, they have a desire where they want to make a bunch of money, okay? Again, that's not your job to make a bunch of money. That is your desire to make a bunch of money. That's what everybody wants to go to work for or start a business for. But when it comes to, again, if you want to make a lot of money, what, what is actually your, your job in order to make a lot of money? You have to solve other people's problems. If you're really good at solving other people's problems, then you can provide a service that in turn makes a lot of money. Now, as a tennis player, your number one job, you might want to write this down, is to solve your own problems and then also pick on your opponent's problems. Those are the two things you need to focus on. But in this video, I really want to focus on how do you fix your own problems? How do you solve your own problems? And it just comes down to mindset. You want to accept the fact that tennis is not just here for you to hit a bunch of winners and play in the zone all the time. That's going to happen on a very rare occasion. And what happens when you have this as your expectation, this is your desire for your tennis match, if that's not happening within two games, and again, why am I making this video? Because yesterday I was out coaching some juniors and any junior that got down one, two, love, they already were saying that they didn't have it that day. And you see, that's the biggest problem. If you get down a game, two games, three games, and all of a sudden you've determined because you're not playing amazing tennis, what you desire, what you picture you should always go out and play, if that's not happening, then you just kind of throw in the towel mentally and emotionally and you're going to lose. But if you step on the court each and every day and go, you know what, I'm a great problem solver. If I'm playing another good player, and a lot of you out there are playing league tennis or UTR tennis, you're gonna be evenly matched. So you're gonna have problems out there if you have a good opponent. They're gonna create some problems for you and you're gonna create your own problems by missing shots you shouldn't miss. That's normal and natural. That's nothing to get upset about and start quitting, tanking, getting angry. You've got to get excited and go, okay, how do I solve this problem? If my serve's not going in, that's okay. It doesn't mean my serve is absolutely going to stink all day. It's starting out not going in. Why is the serve not going in? The better you are at answering this question, the better tennis you're going to play. And unfortunately, too many tennis players can't answer these uh, problems. They, they don't know the answers to these problems. Just a perfect example, I was on this court over there, I was on this court yesterday, and the young lady was getting very upset that she was double faulting. And I said, well, why are you double faulting? And she took a guess that she didn't keep her head up because that's one of the things that I tell people. Well, she was hitting her serve over the night. I said, that's, that's not your problem. She goes, well, then I don't know. You see, her problem was that she wasn't accelerating and snapping, putting up spin on her second serve to get the ball to rotate and drop in the box but she didn't know how to fix her problem. So all she had was frustration that she wasn't in the zone, that she wasn't feeling the ball, okay? So what you wanna do is when you play a match, you wanna get excited about solving problems. You wanna think, okay, today I can be better at my opponent than solving problems. If you just go in there with that mindset, you're going to start to win a lot more matches because most people who play tennis, they don't think like that. 
They just play with desire. I want to play great. I want to feel the ball awesome. I want to hit winners. I want to play my, my favorite player that I see on the internet. And so if you can go in there and do what I'm telling you to do, you have a big advantage right off the bat over your opponent. And then you got to start to be right, okay? You've got to start to be right by solving your problems because if you're guessing what your problem is and you're wrong, you're still not solving the problem. So you've got to be a really good problem solver to be a really good tennis player. And uh, so here's just a couple of things I want you to think about when you play. When you miss a shot, I want you to think about, it's usually three reasons why you miss a shot. Number one, it could be technical, okay? So you could miss a shot and you might have tried to hit the right shot, but the ball went in the net on your forehand, okay? So then you gotta ask yourself, technically, what did you not do? Now typically, if a ball is going in the net, it could be that your racket face is too closed, that your hand didn't get under the ball, that your legs didn't get under the ball. That's usually why a ball is gonna go in the net, that you come over top of the ball with your racket. So the first question I would really think about is think about, okay, where was my hand position and where are my legs? The next time I see that forehand, I'm gonna get my hands lower beneath the ball and my legs lower and lift, and I'm gonna have a higher target. You know, maybe the target wasn't good. So that's number one. Your mistake could be technical, and you gotta go, okay, that was a technical mistake. Another mistake that you could make could be tactical, right? You could hit a shot, and uh, you know, it's a great cross-court shot, and then all of a sudden, you go to the next shot and it's coming and you have another ball and you try and fire a winner up the line and, and you miss it wide. And you're like, oh man, I can't believe I missed that shot. Well, that's not necessarily technical. It could be tactical. It's like, why are you trying that shot down the line when you're like two feet behind the baseline, even if you make the shot the way you were trying to aim it like an inch over the net and trying to hit the line. Even if you try to make that so far behind the baseline, most likely, it's not, you don't have enough firepower where that's going to be a winner, okay? You're not hitting cannons out of the court like some of the pros do. So it was not a smart shot. It was a bad tactical shot. Another reason you might miss, and this is where you have to be really honest with yourself, it comes down to focus and nerves. Sometimes you pick the right shot, your technique is okay, you know, you probably did something technical where you just kind of bail out, but it's not really that it was your technique that was the problem. It was that you lost your focus or you got nervous and that's why you missed the shot. And you have to be honest with yourself and go, okay, I'm like really nervous right now. And then you gotta find cues like how to deal with your nerves. A couple things you can do is work on your breathing uh, in between points. You can, uh, I love this one by Jeff Greenwald, you can hold your racket super tight so that your arms get all tight and tense and then you can release and then all of a sudden you're loose. So at least you feel loose for the next shot because most time when we get nervous, right before we hit we feel extremely tight and that tends us to be, you know, kind of jerky in our shot. Okay, so I want you to think about this the next time you go and play tennis and start to change the way that you feel your job is as a tennis tennis player. Your job is not to go out there and play amazing each and every time. If you're playing somebody who is your equal, they're going to create problems for you and you're going to create your own problems. Whoever is the best problem solver is going to win the match. I'm going to leave you with this Rafaism that's one of my favorites. There was one match I watched him play and he was having all kinds of trouble breaking. He was playing this one opponent and he had a million break points, a million break points. Sometimes the guy would come up with a great shot, creating a problem for Rafa, nothing Rafa could do about it. And then Rafa was also creating his own problems. There were some really good looks he had that he just missed, but he just hung in there. He just hung in there and game after game, he wouldn't break. And then finally, when he got that one break, it was a watershed moment. The match just fell, fell right in his hands after that and he ended up winning the match uh, fairly easily after it looked like it was gonna be a big, big struggle. And uh, in the press conference, they asked him about this. Hey, Rafa, you know, what do you think about that? You're having a lot of trouble breaking early in the match, and you know, what were you thinking in your head? And he says, well, I just keep saying to myself, I need to keep fighting and accepting. And that is a great line. I mean, just use that as your mantra. In tennis, you need to keep fighting and accepting, fighting and accepting. That's what the game is. It's just a big game of tug of war. Momentum goes back and forth and you have to be willing to 
fight each and every point and accept the outcome whether it's good or bad and then just get yourself up off the mat and fight again but the whole time that you're fighting you're also working on your problem solving you're trying to figure out well you know why am i missing this shot why is my opponent hitting winners what shot don't they like to hit maybe i can give them more of that shot and they're eventually going to break down so hopefully now when you go out there and you play your next match you know that your job is not to go out there and play in the zone that you're excited, that you're a problem solver. The next time you get down 3-0, get excited. Don't get down, don't beat yourself up and go, okay, now, now I get to really test my problem solving skills today. Let's see, what are the problems that's happening? What's my opponent doing? What am I not doing? And how can I fix this? Then you're gonna be a real tennis player. Then you become a real tennis player. You know what else makes you a real tennis player? Having a real serve. And I'm gonna help you out right now with 33 free videos in my course called Serving A to Z. Because we all know the serve is the most complicated stroke in tennis for sure. And a lot of people out there, and maybe you're one of them, don't have great serves. If you go out and you look at your recreational tennis courts, there's not many awesome serves out there. And I want you to be one of the ones with an awesome serve where I'm gonna teach you how to get your toss under control, how to have the correct grip, how to hit a slice serve, how to hit a kick serve, how to maybe be able to one day hit a 100 mile an hour serve, that's right, by sinking your kinetic chain. So if you're interested in that, go up in the card section and it's 100% free, you go to a page, you just fill out your email and then you'll be sent to create your login details and you're off and running with my free course serving A to Z. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a big like. And remember, every time you like one of my videos, my best buddy, B2, is gonna give you a 100 free B2 puppy kisses. And consider subscribing so you don't miss my next video. See you guys.